Hey guys, it's Chris from Winter Auto Repair. I wanted to give you a little bit of information about brakes today and in New Jersey here, why inspection is important, yet we don't have it. So, for example, behind me, we have a 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee, came in, had a steering and braking problem. Um, we diagnosed it as a brake pad had actually fallen off. Um, it fell off because of the quality of the parts that were used, which is what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. And the second thing, and problem that we're having is without inspection, there's nobody really looking these cars over. So as you can see behind me, the Jeep's in pretty good condition. Um, came in, had a brake issue. I'm gonna show you the brake rotor itself. So the brake issue here, this brake rotor, you can see where it was scored up. The reason it was scored up is because the brake pad actually fell off the backing plate and this was now rubbing directly metal on metal and grinding up. This rotor's uh, pretty ugly, it's seen better days. <coughs> Just to give you an idea of what a proper used brake rotor or brake pad should look like, you got brake pad that still has some pad material left, brake pad where the pad material actually came off. Um, this is things uh, in Pennsylvania that would get checked at state inspection. In New Jersey here, we don't have state inspection any longer, so these are things that are not being checked. Now, when you come here to Winter Auto Repair, when we go and change your oil, we always do a check over. We make sure that the car's got proper brakes. We might make sure the car's shocks are in good shape, tie rod ends, just as a regular state inspection would be done. Uh, I know most people think that's so that we can sell you things. For us here in this shop, it's so that we can make sure you and your family are very safe. I take your family safety at the highest priority here. Uh, and one of the reasons we do that is I'm a family man, got six children of my own. So I wanna make sure that your kids are gonna survive uh, out on the road just like mine all right so i treat everybody like your family so what we're going to do is the process of the brake job you're going to have caliper brackets your pins you're going to have your brake rotors these are the different components that we're going to be working on today so what we have here behind us is a completed brake job all right so you can see this is the brake rotor this is going to be your brake caliper this is going to be your brake pad this is going to be your caliper bracket now what we do is we completely disassemble this after we've assessed the situation and we're going to take off the brake rotors now a lot of times people say can I cut my brake rotor cutting brake rotors is literally a machine that would grind and take off the material here um, used to be able to do that back in the 80s and 90s brake rotors were really really thick they could be put on a machine called the lathe that could be cut off you could generally cut them two or three times before you had to replace them Back then, brake rotors were fairly expensive. They were roughly about two, $250 because they were so thick. Um, the reason they got away from that is the weight as this is rotating, this rotating mass, causes things like poor gas mileage and poor handling in a car. So they make brake rotors typically as thin as possible, brand new. So cutting brake rotors hasn't been done. We haven't done it here in a very, very long time. Um, sometimes you can get away with taking the glaze off of a brake rotor. Let's say it's a rear brake rotor. It's pretty ne decent. We'll knock the glaze off and maybe put some pads on it. But for the most part here in our shop, we would do a brake rotor replacement only. So this rotor that was used, you can see, was actually what we would call a white box rotor. White box rotor means it comes in a white box and whatever auto parts store it goes to, whether it's an AutoZone or a Napa, they stick their label on it and it gets shipped out. Um, brake rotors that are coming in a white box will do this, it's called scaling, where the rotor starts to rot out and rust. Um, you're going to get the veins are going to start to rot out and rust. When this starts to happen, you lose braking ability and in addition to that, if you've ever hit the brakes and gotten a vibration in the steering wheel, it's from a warped brake rotor. Typically that comes from a, a white box type of a brake rotor. Uh, white box rotors do not come machined, they do not come balanced, they just come raw. They're cheaper, so most people will buy them uh, or shops will try and sell them to you so that they can get a brake job because they're gonna do it on a, on a cheaper basis. We don't wanna do a cheap brake job, we wanna do a good brake job. So a brake rotor like this typically lasts anywhere from 15 to let's say 30,000 miles. Um, this particular brake rotor, my guess would be it's on the 30,000 mile side. It's pretty scaled up. It's pretty rusted out. Now the back brake rotor, also white box. This rotor only has maybe 10,000 or so miles on it. I don't even know if it has that many. And you can see that it's already starting to rust on the drum. Now this one, because it's a rear, doesn't have veins, but you can see the rust buildup on the end. And on the inside, you can see the rust buildup, and it's only maybe 10,000 miles old. Still pretty new. We know that it's fairly new 
because the rear brake pad still has a lot of pad material on it. You can see how much pad material there is um, versus a brake pad that's got, let's say, 30,000 miles on it. All right, so that's the difference there. So we know that this brake rotor is not that old, but it's already starting to scale up. The reason we're changing it, it had a little bit of a brake caliper issue, so we went ahead and we're putting brake um, rotors and pads front and back on this particular Jeep. All right? Now, instead of a white box rotor at Winter Auto Repair, we use a high carbon rotor. High carbon rotors, some of the differences that you're going to see. You can see the cross hatching, this machining. That cross hatching, what that does is that will balance the brake rotor, make sure that it's perfectly machined smooth, less chance of warping. The other thing you're going to notice is the black, um, where the surface of the pad is not touching. So the drum in the veins, and again on the inside of the hat, all done in black. That's a high temp coating. What that's going to do, that's going to prevent that rusting. The quality of the rotor is going to make this brake job last much, much longer. Our rotors, since I, I can't guarantee how long they're going to last, but our rotors typically last two and a half times longer to four times longer. For example, a Jeep like this, if they got 30,000 miles out of a white box rotor, they'll get right around 60 to 70,000 miles out of our brakes. Uh, we've our records right now in the front, we get right around 90,000. I'm sorry, 91,000 miles on the front, and in the back, 98,000 miles on one of our brake jobs. Um, one of the main reasons is because of the quality of the part that we're using here. I would much rather charge you a little bit extra for a much better brake rotor because the labor cost is the same, doesn't matter if we use a cheap part or not. The brake job may be a few bucks more up front. For example, a white box brake job on this Jeep would be, let's say, $350, where a good quality job like this is maybe $450. It's $100 more because of the cost of the part. However, you are going to get two to three times longer life out of it. So instead of spending $350 three times, you're going to spend $450 once for that same amount. It saves you a ton of money over the long run. All right? In addition to that, that keeps your family safer because we know we're putting a quality part on there. The next thing that sets us apart from the typical brake uh, job that gets done in the area, this is your brake caliper bracket. Your brake pad goes in here, and this is what, where it would slide in. This is supposed to be able to slide back and forth can't even move the brake pad, which is part of the reason why you saw this happen. This, we would take the caliper hardware off, which would be here. This caliper has the hardware on this side. We've already taken the caliper off. We're going to then sand the whole caliper bracket down. We're going to remove the pins. So these are the pins that go in here. All right. These are supposed to slide in and out. You can see here it's rotting out where it sits on the rubbers. That prevents moisture from getting into the pin and it seals it up so that it won't rust down into here. This caliper pin has failed, so we would throw this caliper pin away, replace it with a new one. This particular caliper pin was salvageable, so we've sanded this one down. You can see the purple, this, the purple color on here. That is a ceramic brake uh, grease. That's good to 3,000 degrees. When we install that in here, that's going to make that seal nice on the rubber. We verify that it's got some smooth action in and out. Now we know that that's ready to go. This caliper bracket was used, we sanded it down, we coated it, it's ready to go. We're going to get ready to do that installation. We're going to check to make sure that our pads can come through here nice and smooth like this, which we can. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some purple on here. We're going to put our hardware in and we're going to install it on the car. Then after that, we're going to mount the caliper and verify that it's all good. Then we take the car for a test drive and we do what we call a bed uh, brake pad bedding procedure. It's where the brake pads actually get fit to the brake rotor, makes them last a lot longer, goes through a heat cycle, something that I used to do in racing, makes our brake jobs last a little bit longer. So this caliper bracket would then get put on the car. We're going to verify that the fitment is perfect. We're going to use all brand new hardware. We're going to use a purple grease, 3000 degree grease once again. This prevents any brake squealing. This also keeps the pad moving properly so that you actually get good, solid brake pedal feel and long life. So again, this is what the job should look like when it's done. Most people don't actually get to see this kind of work, um, but I encourage you, if you're going to a, a name brand store, like a chain store, ask them to see what kind of parts they use because it's definitely an apples and oranges situation. You get a brake price of $200 to get new brakes and you get a brake price of $500. The guy doing the $500 brake job is most likely using a much better quality product. So before you go and assume he's ripping you off, 
Ask them the product. Is it machined? Is it coated? Is it a good quality hardened caliper? This is a high nickel content caliper. Um, we use a very, very good quality ceramic brake pad. These brake pads cost us $90. So this combination here, this truck will last, and I know the person that owns this thing will be safe on the road for many, many years. Again, this is Chris from Winter Auto Repair, where our work is done once, done right, and guaranteed. Thanks, guys.